Hello students, welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a simple children's puzzle. So the program we're going to use for this project is Microsoft Publisher. It might be listed as uh, Microsoft Office Publisher, so please look for that icon and open Microsoft Publisher. All right, so in the template screen, let's click on blank page sizes, and then let's look for letter landscape, letter landscape. Okay, please don't click legal landscape. That's going to cause a lot of problems with the printer. So letter landscape. And in the bottom right hand corner, let's click create. All right. So we're given a sheet here, which is in landscape orientation because we told it, we told the computer that that's what we wanted. You see that there is a blue border here okay so that won't show up on our print but that's just in there to give us an idea of kind of the space we're working with so we're going to use that blue border as um, as a guideline okay down the left hand side let's find some clip art so let's click on the picture tool picture frame and then we're going to choose clip art so what I want you to do is remember we're trying to create uh, a very simple puzzle for a young child. So I want you to choose something that is fairly child friendly or kid friendly. So I'm going to choose butterfly. Okay, so in the search for window, you can type in uh, something appropriate here that you're thinking of, whether it's kitten or whether it's fire truck, something simple, something basic, something that kids would identify with. And then in this window here, results should be, I'm going to change this, and we're going to look for only clip arts. We don't want photographs, we don't want movies, we don't want sounds. So if these are uh, checked off, uncheck them and make sure only clip art is checked. All right, let's click go. So I don't want you to use butterfly because I'm using butterfly as um, kind of the, uh, the template here. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to find a clip art that's somewhat cartoony. It's not too lifelike, but it's also very colorful because when we're making a puzzle, those colors are going to be very important to put the puzzle pieces together. So make a good choice and then click on your clip art and drag and drop into your page. Now the good thing about Microsoft Publisher is that it allows you to move objects around and uh, lay them on top of each other. So what I want to do is I just want to make sure that it's inside my border. I'm going to kind of shove it up against the top left hand corner and then from the bottom right hand corner, the control point, I'm just going to drag and I'm going to drag it all the way down to the bottom blue border. So that way I know that I've stretched my image as far as it can go in terms of top to bottom. Now if I move it and if I center it kind of inside my blue border, I'll notice that I haven't stretched it left to right, but I don't really want to um, alter the image. So I'm going to live with that. Okay. All right. So we should do an immediate save. So let's go up to file and let's go to save as. Now remember when you're saving, you have to look for the word computer down the left hand side of your screen. Where you see the word computer, you have to click on the little triangle next to the word computer so that you can click on your student number. So make sure you click on your student number and then let's save this as Alphabet Puzzle 1. Okay, because uh, hopefully we'll get an opportunity to make a few puzzles here. So Alphabet Puzzle 1 and then let's click Save. Okay, so often when children are learning the alphabet, they associate the letter with an object. So in this case, I've got a butterfly. So what I want to do is in this puzzle, I also want to place a letter B. So let's use some clip art, I mean some word art, I should say. So down the left hand side, let's uh, down the left hand tool panel, let's go insert word art. So I'm just going to choose something basic for now. Okay. And then I'm going to click OK. So because mine is my puzzle is a butterfly, I'm going to type in the word B. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the font to a font that I know I like. Now you can change this later as well, but I know that I like Calibri. And I'm going to click Bold. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size to the maximum size. And then I'm going to click OK. Now it may be hard to see because what it did was it overlaid the letter, the word art, right on top of my butterfly. So I'm just going to move it over here. Now you'll see that you have a word art kind of panel here. Okay. Now I don't like how the, the letter B is angled upwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look across this panel and I'm going to go to word art shape. And I'm just going to change it to the regular plain text uh, choice. Okay. All right, next, let's click on Format Word Art. And this time, I'm going to choose a colorful color instead of black. So what I want to do is I probably want to try and match the color of the letter to the color of my clip art. So I've got some beautiful greens and some yellows and some oranges to choose from. So for the fill color, I can go click on the down arrow and look for more colors. And then I can just choose a really nice color here. So let me choose this. Click OK. And then I can also change the outline. There's actually an outline here. So I'm going to keep the outline color black. But I'm just going to make it a little bit more prominent under weight. I'm going to bump this up here to 1.5. And then click OK. OK. So you see that outline there? And then I've got my fill color as green inside. Now you can get fancier if you want. Okay, you can discover some more things. Okay, there are certain patterns that you can create inside. Okay, if you go to fill effects, you experiment, make it really nice. Okay, all right, so what I want to do is now I want to just push and stretch and manipulate this letter so that it looks a little bit more. Um, visible, I guess, and I just want to adjust the size so that it doesn't overpower the rest of the puzzle, but it's also quite prominent, okay? I don't want it to overlap my picture if you can. You don't have to place the letter in the bottom right-hand corner. You can place it wherever you think is appropriate. Now, the good thing is, is that if we get a class set of these puzzles, they'll all look a little bit different, which is kind of exciting. Okay. All right. So we've got our main components of our puzzle. We've got our image and we've got our letter. Okay. So now let's overlay the puzzle pieces on top of it. All right. So again, we're going to have to, on the left hand pane of tools, we'll have to go to picture frame. And this time I need you to go to picture from file. Okay. So again, because I'm recording this from home, it's going to be a little bit different. So what you need to do is you need to look for, actually, maybe I can go to insert picture from file. Maybe that's better. Let's try that. Insert picture from file. Okay, so that's going to work. So let me go over that again. So we're going to go from the top uh, pull down menus and we're going to go to insert picture from file. Okay, so you're going to have to do a little bit of digging here. You're going to have to find the four students drive either from the left hand side or maybe you can push the click the down arrow here. You have to go to the four students drive, the out folder, the UEDA folder, the video tutorials folder, the puzzle project folder, and I want you to look for this image. It's called the 3 milliliter or 3 ml puzzle piece template okay click on that and click on insert okay so the puzzle uh, template should rest on top of your your um, puzzle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it and drag it again to the top left hand corner remember that top left hand corner we used before as a great corner to kind of line everything up now from the bottom right hand corner, I'm going to drag and pull down. Okay. 
Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it from the sides and then push it back so that it fits and lays right on top of that blue border. Okay. So let's click, let's deselect, let's click in a white margin, in the white margin here, and let's save. Okay, now, remember those, that blue guideline, that margin guideline that Microsoft Publisher gave us? Well, the printer will actually print slightly outside of that line. So what I want to do is I want to zoom in pretty far here. So let's zoom in to 150%. Okay, and then what I want to do is right near the bottom right hand corner of the puzzle, I want to insert a very small uh, text box. So down the left hand side, let's click on text box. And then when you drag your mouse onto your project, it'll be just a plus sign. So I want you to click your mouse, hold, and then drag down here. Okay, and then what I want you to do is I just want you to type your name so then I know whose puzzle it is. And then what I want to do is I want to drag that box so it's not quite touching the border. Okay. It doesn't matter what font it is because this is actually not going to be part of the puzzle. This is just so I can track whose puzzle it is. Okay, let's zoom out again. So let's go back to 100% or maybe even 75. Let's see if 100% will allow me to see the whole image. Yes, it will. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is I want to create a very thick, prominent border around the outside. So we're going to achieve that just by using the rectangle tool on the left-hand side. So let's click on the rectangle tool. I'm going to again start in the top left hand corner and I'm just going to drag a rectangle directly on top of my puzzle. Now you might be thinking, well, what was the point of that? Because you can't really see it. Well, the point is, is that now we can bump up that border and we can make it, like I said, quite prominent. And this is going to help not only in the cutting of the puzzle pieces, but also in the framing or knowing which, which are the edges. Okay, This is just going to help whatever young child or whatever student is going to work on this puzzle. Okay, so how does it look? So again, this is just a video on how to make a very simple puzzle. You can make it more elaborate. The reason why we kept the background color white is just to save on some uh, color ink. Okay. All right, so Mr. Ueda will give you further instructions on how to uh, electronically submit it so that he can print it off in color. So this is the first stage of this project. So hopefully now that you know how to create a simple puzzle, now you can choose an image of your choice to make the puzzle that you would like to do. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.